Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I hope we all enjoyed. I saw a couple of beers already. Uh, we had the picture. So I think it's time for the closing keynote. And when you think of this closing keynote, um, when you hear people talking about blockchain, it's not immediately that they bring that in direct contact with trust. Nevertheless, the keynote today, this closing keynote, is about the connection between trust and, um, and, and, and security and blockchain technology and Drupal. Um, so I really would like to welcome Sebastian, Sebastian van der Lans to the stage. I don't see you right now here. Where are you? Oh, there. <laughs> hey, Sebastian, please come to the stage. Hey. <laughs> hey, and it's actually uh, quite uh, great that you're here because I heard you had to have a babysit at home, right? I'm with uh, paternity leave, actually. <laughs> paternity leave, even. But when Bert calls, you can't say no. Okay, okay, so it's all Bert's uh, uh, fault, or, or we really should thank Bert for you having you here. It's a pleasure being here, so all right. thanks for the invitation. Enjoy well. your keynote, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, hey everyone, um, how's your conference so far? Do you like it to be together again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's super special, it's super special that we can finally, finally do live events again. And for me, it's, I've, I've done over 50 keynotes from my, from my bedroom, actually. So to be back at events for the organizer, it must be super special. Uh, at the moment of organizing, they were not sure that it could really happen. So yeah, let's do one standing ovation for them. Is that okay? It feels so good to connect and be together. <laughs> we have 45 minutes for this talk. I'll keep it uh, in about I'll keep it about 30 minutes. Then we have some time for Q and A, and then we're uh, yeah finish early for some drinks. Who likes drinks? <laughs> <laughs> and it's super good that you have uh, drinks in the sponsor booth already. It's uh, yeah normally on conference we're always waiting. Who's the dog owner here? Few of them. Uh, I was actually with paternity leave, but uh, then Bert called me. But I brought a picture of my dog to make sure that I uh, won't miss him. Here's my boy, Koda. No Koda today. Oh. <laughs> so this is actually the first time I leave Amsterdam. Uh, since we got the pup two weeks back, uh, I was begging my husband for five years to get a puppy. I gained his trust. And uh, yeah, on March 25, he was born. And uh, yeah, it feels good to have him with us today. It goes faster than... Ah, then we do it by hand. Yeah, okay. How to fix the web with Drupal and blockchain? Who knows a bit about blockchain here? Okay, that's good. Who, who cares about search engine optimization a bit? Ah, perfect. Let's see if we can connect the two topics. Firstly, I'll tell a bit about myself. Uh, then on what we work, uh, what we work on together with the European Commission and players from the search engine uh, space, I'll share some applications of blockchain timestamping, mainly for uh, gaining trust, for copyright, and search engine optimization. Uh, and lastly, what you can do today, or what we as an open source uh, software users can do to gravitate society, ourselves, and our clients towards what we call a trusted web. Because we can literally change the world and the web for the better with the philosophy we have as open source uh, technologists and open source communities. So that's what we'll talk about. And the good thing with blockchain is that we can bring the principles from open source, not just to the 100 million website owners in the world, but truly to all 5 billion users of the internet. My name is Sebastian van der Lans. Um, I've been working full-time in open source software for over 15 years, and blockchain for nine years. Um, I ran one of the first WordPress agencies, and I come in peace. Uh, <laughs> since 20, 2019, uh, I run a startup, and it's called WordProof. Anyone heard of WordProof? Oh, some of you. Who used it? Wow, people from Swiss made a module. Um, and the startup is funded by the European Commission. 
we won a prize. It was Europe's Blockchains for Social Goods competition. The wonderful thing on Europe organizing a blockchain competition, it's called Blockchains for Social Good, is that it's not about speculation, tokens, whatever. It's about Europe discovering how to use blockchain technology uh, to gain uh, trust or to build a better society. It's truly a good vision from Europe that they see it from that perspective. Uh, we won a million euro in that competition to fund the startup. Um, the, who knows the plugin Yoast from the WordPress space? Yeah, they run on 14 million websites. They're an investor in the initiative as well, in the movement. Wordproof is a company, but it's mainly about the trusted web movement we talk about today. Uh, married to Mirko, my husband, father of Code Out of Dog, and aspiring do dad, but that's for uh, the drinks. 30 years of internet, 30 years of building uh, websites and web applications. What did it bring us? With Google, we organize uh, information. With Facebook and LinkedIn, we organize people. Airbnb, Booking, Funda in the Netherlands for uh, where we live or where we travel. And lastly, Uber and competitors for transport. Mainly, it brought us perfect organization of everything and great UX. Can we have a round of applause for the internet? <laughs> I'm sure all of us heavily contributed to all the good things on the internet. At the same time, and I'll add a black screen for some drama, even though the internet has brought us many great things, it has a deep-rooted issue, and it's with trust. Trust at the internet is at an all-time low. And it's quite obvious that it happened, as trust simply wasn't part of the internet's design. The internet was built to connect computers to computers, and computers, they do not dream, they do not care about uh, self-enrichment or power, as they have no egos. But humans do, and therefore today on the internet, uh, we suffer fraud and manipulation, fake news, theft, and search engines, social media, and the internet as a whole isn't really a safe place anymore, and that echoes back to society. So, to save the world, we need to fix the internet. And therefore, trust must become part of the internet's DNA. Fair viable by people, fair viable by search engines. And simply said, trust arises from two building blocks. Um, it's transparency, how did information change over time? And secondly, accountability, who's the sender of information? And ideally, all... Sorry? No, 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 it's a black screen. <laughs> it's part of it. Uh, and ideally, so transparency, how did information change over time? And accountability, who's the center of information? And all in an open source way. Because if information impacts our life, we deserve transparency and accountability, whether it's terms and conditions, e-commerce information, news, government information, we deserve transparency and accountability. This is a quote, my favorite quote from Dries. I use them also in all WordPress conferences. Um, and I believe, that's what his quote, I believe open source to be the only way to build a pro-privacy, anti-monopoly and open web. And whether you come from WordPress or Drupal or any other open source community, we all have a shared belief, a common belief in the transformative power of open source technology and its communities. Once an open source community is up to speed, you simply can't compete with that. We saw that with Wikipedia, we see that with Android dominating over 70% of the mobile open source uh, or mobile uh, OS, and we see that with Drupal and WordPress togetherly dominating the content management market. Open source is the only way, I believe, to restore trust on the internet, to shift the internet towards a trusted web. And we as open source communities, we hold the key to restoring that trust. And as I said, trust arises from two things. Transparency, how did information change, and accountability. Who's the center of information? All in an open source way, without needing to trust any third parties. Many have heard of Bitcoin, uh, an open source way to transfer value from one person to another. But it is the most well-known application of blockchain technology, uh, and uh, the Bitcoin white paper was published in 2008. But blockchain technology, it was invented 
1991, 31 years back, to prove that you didn't tamper with information. And a timestamp, a blockchain timestamp, that was the first uh, white paper. It was how to timestamp a digital document from Scott Sternetta and Stuart Haber. Um, it's about um, what it is. It's you have a document or a file, a hash of that file, a fingerprint you put in a blockchain transaction. And from that moment, you can prove at least that the information existed at that moment in time. And furthermore, you can connect an identity to the blockchain uh, transaction or the blockchain wallet you timestamp it with. And in that way, uh, you can actually do exactly that. You can, do, you can bring transparency and accountability in a fully, fully, fully open source way to all information that matters. And what, what, what I'll do is I'll share a short video on what a trusted web is about, and then we dive into practicalities. What does it look like? How can you start using it? There is actually a Drupal module. It's built by the people from Swiss. It's open source. It's available, uh, but we'll talk about that afterwards. Here's a short video on a trusted web. Hey, this is Sebastian, and I believe that to save the world, we need to fix the internet. And trust must become part of the internet's DNA. And this is what a timestamp does. It brings transparency and accountability to information that matters. From news outlets to legal documents and from e-commerce to social media, timestamping is an open source solution for restoring trust on the internet. This is how it works. Each piece of content has a unique fingerprint, the hash. And that hash is unique for that state of the content. So modify only one small detail and the hash changes completely. By storing this hash in a blockchain transaction, you can forever prove that state of the content at a certain moment in time. To take it one step further, a person or organization can take accountability for its content by connecting an identity to that timestamp. Now sites can choose to show a timestamp certificate so that readers can verify how content changed over time and who exactly published it. See it as bringing every piece of content to a notary at the moment of publishing. And while a notary is slow and expensive, a timestamp is instantaneous and it only costs cents. True standardization, even search engines and social media can read and verify timestamps, right? in the language that they understand. The more transparency, the higher content should rank, and the more accountability, the higher content should rank. And as a result of that, freedom of speech no longer automatically means freedom of reach. And so in a few years from now, if information that matters isn't timestamped, you'll be considered a fraud. Citizens, consumers, policymakers, social media and search engines, they will simply wonder if you don't timestamp, what are you hiding? So join the timestamp revolution and let's build the trusted web together. Yay. So that's the video we mainly use to educate all stakeholders at big tech, at, um, at the policy making. And the interesting thing is, or a question could be, hey, um, why is it important for your visitors that they can verify content? Um, we as site owners are making sites for our customers who use open source software, whether it's uh, Drupal, WordPress, doesn't matter. We are used to radical transparency and accountability from the platforms and the software we use with. Um, we can go to the repository and check if the software doesn't do anything malicious, uh, like unintentionally leaking data, sending data, anything. We, as the tens of millions of uh, open source site owners, we are used to radical transparency. But our visitors, they aren't. Uh, site owners and shop owners, platform owners can handle without integrity, without the visitor being able to verify. And through timestamps, we bring the possibility of verification to all people of the internet, to all the 5 billion internet, almost 5 billion internet users. Um, and we believe that, and that's what the quote says, it was in the video as well, in a few years from now, 
radical transparency will be common sense. The question will be, if you don't timestamp, what are you hiding? Um, because today, trust is hard. With timestamps, we, we really democratize the ability to verify. On a news site, for example, if you have a favorite news site, you often see, last edited four hours ago. You could say, wow, that's transparent. Thank you for sharing that. But you could also be a bit suspicious. What was there four hours ago uh, that I'm not allowed to see anymore? So um, what it could look like in practice is that you can click on last edited, and then you see how information changed over time. Here's an example. Here's a blog article. Scroll to the bottom. That can be anywhere the trigger. You click. Here's a timestamp certificate. You click. Here's the revisions, all stored in the CMS. And there you can see really Git style. So what you have for code as a developer should come to terms and conditions, should come, here is it still, should come to uh, government information, should come to, to news. Um, does that make sense? I think so, for, for information as well. We as developers are used to this radical transparency, but what if we bring it to all information that impacts our lives, our buying decisions, our health decisions. Uh, today, over 800 million page views are served with a timestamp. Uh, over 1,000 uh, websites use it, and um, more than 5 million articles from newspapers and e commerce uh, products are timestamped. So it's a real life blockchain use case. Um, and Here's some examples. So this is a really small user. Um, it's um, a, a little, small, medium-sized enterprise. Um, a customer accused him of uh, changing his terms and conditions. Uh, he didn't bring them to the Chamber of Commerce or the, uh, the blasting news. But <laughs> the, uh, he did timestamp the information. So he was able to prove her with his, uh, with his few cent costing timestamp that he didn't tamper the, uh, the terms and conditions. And therefore, without an attorney, without a lawyer, without any legal, further legal help, he was able to convince her, no, I didn't change terms and conditions. She, she paid the invoice of, in this case, 20K. And he, who wasn't able to, yeah, or who wasn't willing to hire, in his case, he was able to rent a lawyer, but for all small businesses who aren't able to hire uh, a lawyer, it democratizes the ability to prove that you handled with integrity. Larger users, uh, we did a pilot with the Pers Group, uh, one of the largest publishers in the Netherlands. NRC is uh, with their 50 million, uh, it, it's a leading newspaper, the Dutch people know that. Uh, they are timestamping their content, over a million articles from them are timestamped, and uh, yeah, more than 10,000 10, timestamps uh, a month are placed by them. And um, they mainly did it for search engine optimization. So, what do timestamps have to do with search, you may ask? Content exploration, so how people discover content. A few years back, 70% of all content exploration happened in search engines. Uh, that number is way higher. It's, it's growing and growing. Three years back, it was 70%. I expect it to be 80%. Um, what we want is not only people, but also search engines to verify our content. And for that, we must offer timestamps to search engines in the language that they understand, which is schema.org, or structured data. And that's why, since last year, we teamed up with the people at Yoast. Um, yeah, as I told, they did the schema implementation for 14 million websites, and worked towards making the open source timestamps, um, which are blockchain agnostic, make the timestamps part of the schema language. And um, we imagine search engines to label in their search engine result pages which results are timestamped, which uh, companies have terms and conditions that are timestamped. And there's a, even a first uh, small search engine, they're called pre-search, which will uh, label the timestamps in their search engine result page. So we're super happy with that. They will do that by the end of the year. Um, The question is, why would a search engine do that? 
I talked to Joost de Valk a lot, the founder of Joost, and he's been saying for over a decade, there's only one search engine optimization strategy, and that's simply to be the best, highest quality result. And that sounds like an open door, but all changes in algorithms and all important changes in search prove that. So in 2014, the question was, does having a mobile version of my website improve my SEO? The answer was yes, absolutely. Uh, there's even a mobile index, especially for mobile things. Why? Because it's a better user experience if it fits the device. 2017, does using SSL impact my uh, rankings? The answer was yes, absolutely. Google in the browser even says, and in the search engine result page, it's not secure if you don't. So a logical next question is, does bringing radical transparency and accountability in an open source way, is that a higher quality result on a search engine result page? Arguably, the answer is yes. So if content ranks based on transparency and accountability, uh, what you then get is that all information can still be placed on the internet, but before information can go viral, a certain amount of accountability must be taken. And what you then get is freedom of speech. There's still freedom of speech because anything can be published on the internet, but before it can go viral, there must be a certain level of accountability. So there's not automatically freedom of reach. And that's a big solution towards an internet with less misinformation, uh, less fake news. Um, and if all information that matters is timestamped and uh, algorithms reward radical transparency, a, tr a trusted web arises. And by the way, um, these ideas to use trust for ranking, they aren't new. Um, the vision is highly compatible. Who knows Google EAT? Some people who are deep in uh, SEO know about it. It's about expertise, authority, and trust. Uh, it's a way I, I, they change their algorithms towards uh, rewarding expertise, authority, and trust. And if you tie your identity to a wallet, you can really start connecting your content to your expertise, and in that way build an open source reputation on the internet, which potentially fixes a lot of authorship's uh, problems, which are the main problems in search. And in that way, we bring our open source philosophy, it's really the way how we all as open source communities think and act and work, we bring it to all content in the world and the freedom to verify. We bring it to all billions of users and not just the site owners. Um, a bit on policy making. This is the framework we use for educating policymakers. It's, it's Europe, it's in the Netherlands, and it's also uh, in other countries because Europe has a reputation in building a better internet. Firstly, we had the unregulated internet who likes GDPR? <laughs> Nobody likes GDPR, right? <laughs> uh, the execution of GDPR was absolutely terrible. It wasn't wonderful, but the intention behind it is amazing. We, Europe learned that um, the citizens weren't able to protect their own privacy, so they made companies more responsible for the privacy. So. Although the execution wasn't beautiful, it's a great intention to fight for a better internet. And the whole world had to adopt it. If you want to do business, if you want to communicate with European people, you need to respect their privacy and their data rights. So the policy framework we use is there was unregulated internet, the law of the jungle. Then there was a GDPR to protect the uh, data and the privacy of the citizens. And a logical next step is that all information that reaches the consumer and that's impacting their life and their buying decisions must be transparent, must be accountable. So that's the framework we use there. So to conclude, the time, do timestamps impact your SEO rankings today? 
Not really, not yet, but once search engines and social media take timestamps into account, it will matter that you timestamped early, because a timestamp placed today is exactly the same as a timestamp that will be placed in 2025. So timestamping today earlier than the competitor, earlier than competitors of your customers, it matters. Um, do they benefit your visitors today? For sure, they help you to show and prove and make it a manifest that you handle with integrity. And for them, it leads to a trusted web where information that matters is transparent and accountable. And timestamps, benefit, do they benefit you uh, as a site owner or an SEO today? For sure, it's like bringing your valuable content to uh, a notary, but then super cheap, super, it, it's, it happens in real time. And, um, in that way, it can help you with protecting with legal case. We can, during the Q&A, we can dive in that. We have a case of a website, which content was copied by people on eBay, winning, uh, yeah, proving that they, they were the ones uh, f first, uh, or they were the ones who published it first. So they were able, with one email, with their timestamps, to say to eBay, hey, take down the copies, and finally, it wasn't, they weren't able to get the content down from eBay before, but with the timestamps, it was super easy for them to prove, due to the open source timestamps, that they were the first one publishing it. So that's a cool use case. Um, whether you do it for SEO, whether you do it for building a trusted web, with timestamps, we can truly bring the power of open source, not only to all 100 million uh, site owners, but truly to all the 5 billion users of the internet. And in that way, we bring trust, we make trust part of the internet's DNA. And uh, we can make search engines, site, uh, social media, we can make it a trustworthy place, the place where we can uh, let our kids, uh, or maybe grandparents or whatever, a place where we can safely live with all of us, for us and future generations. So um, I always end presentations with saying together, let's build a trusted web together. So let's try that. Let's build the trusted web together. Yay! <laughs> yeah. We have the Drupal module. It's built by the guys at Swiss. Everyone can use it. Um, together with the European Commission, uh, together with all the stakeholders in big tech we talk with, the more sites that are using it, the easier those conversations are. It has PR value. We're searching for some launching users in the Drupal space. Uh, it's not a commercial thing. It's really about having important sites, um, large sites, real niche sites. So if you think that you or one of your customers have a site that's super interesting, um, it, it's a PR opportunity. It's uh, an opportunity to front run and be one of the pioneers in this space. So if you go to this URL or the QR code, uh, you can leave the website there and we get in touch with you. And yeah, we'd love to onboard uh, some great users from the Drupal space. So, uh, and uh, applause for the guys at Swiss uh, who made voluntarily the module. <laughs> we have time for some questions because yeah, we are 30 minutes in. What's their protocol? Is, uh, are you running with a mic? Or? Yep. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Seljuk Demersi uh, from the Drupal uh, Association. I have a, a quick question. How does it look in the, in the praktijk, as we call it in the yeah? Netherlands? <laughs> and uh, uh, could you help us uh, uh, with, with, um, with some use cases or how do how'd you implement it? Yeah, so how it works is it's a module in your CMS, and every time you publish content, uh, it directly timestamps it on a blockchain. So it happens automatically on the background. All the revisions in the timestamp certificate, of course, they are stored in the CMS. Um, that's how it works. So in real time, yeah. 
Yeah, in real time, information will be timestamped. And once the timestamp went through, so some blockchains are super fast uh, seconds, so it's real time. All the blockchains on Bitcoin, there's a block every 10 minutes. Once the moment the timestamp is there, it will be added in the timestamp certificate. OK, pretty clear. Thank you very <laughs> much. And then, of course, for uh, the timestamp, it's in the timestamp certificate. You can trigger that from anywhere. So my suggestion would always be to do it on last edited three hours ago on that thing, but could be anywhere. Um, then it, it will be outputted via schema.org as well, or in the structured data. So all can verify. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kees from DOP. Uh, I had a question. Hi. Uh, for example, in the type when you uh, timestamp news articles, yep. uh, this technology seems to uh, provide trust in that you can see uh, what content is edited and when uh, it is edited but it uh, does not in any way or form uh, verify that you are uh, a trustworthy source. For sure, no. For sure. So uh, it, it not that uh, like confusing for people who see, uh, oh, this content is timestamped, so the source also must be trustworthy, or don't you have the feeling that that might happen? Or the hard th the uh, it's a great question yes um <laughs> <laughs> no so the fact that you, the fact that you timestamp doesn't make it true you can timestamp crap or you can timestamp the information from someone else um by adding identity to the mix so it could be anything. It could be a university giving out a certificate. It could be a government saying, hey, this is this person. It could be a chamber of commerce saying, this is this business. Um, by adding identity to the mix, connecting identity or holding your certificate uh, from the university in your blockchain wallet you timestamp with, you can build your reputation and that's why the collaboration with search engines is so important because you can say or once transparency is rewarded a reputation is built in an open source way and then lying becomes expensive because it's really you without an identity connected it can't go viral with your identity connected you really put your reputation on the line which is what happens in the real world. If I stand here naked, uh, streaking, in a way, <laughs> um, you say, hey, that's Sebastian, what, what is he doing? But in online, you can anonymously uh, do all kinds of stuff without being punished because your reputation is not at risk. So that's why the timestamps prove that something was published at a specific moment in time. Um, but adding identity to the mix truly brings accountability to the information. And what you can do is building an internet where you say, hey, before this information can reach my kids, my, um, my uh, grandma who suffers dementia, it must have a certain level, or the sender of information must have a certain level of accountability. So at least reputation building can happen. So filtering at browser uh, level. That's a long answer on a short question. All right, and you have uh, such a rating system already implemented uh, no. in this? No, uh, and we won't. Ah, because okay. a rating system is super dangerous, because who is the one who rates? Um, there will be a tier level system, and that's all in all the thinking, and that's what we are uh, sorting out. There's a movement, an open source movement, it's about self-sovereign identity. It's really about how do we define identity sorts. And, uh, what, what is in the thinking is a tier level system. So you have a government ID, you have fully anonymous, and then you have, for example, verification with a Twitter account, which is a bit anonymous. Then you have a LinkedIn account, uh, which is a bit more identity and all steps in between. That's something that an open source community must define with each other. But what you can say is, hey, to publish information, any information can be published uh, and it will reach my friends on social media. Um, if I take more accountability, friends of friends can see it. So you design algorithms in a way that it rewards the amount of accountability you take. Does that make sense? It does.
Perfect. Yeah, as a follow-up uh, on this, um, how would you cope with uh, uh, fa fake, oh. news, uh, fa fake news outlets? I mean, uh, Russia Today or uh, Breitbart or whatever. I mean, th those accountabilities, is, uh, they don't care. No. I mean, a lot of people follow those accounts because they believe them. So. Yeah, so it's not the panacea for everything on the internet. All that the trusted web movement does is providing an infrastructure for transparency and accountability. With that in place, the online world will look more like the offline world. So people can be held accountable. And what I imagine, what we imagine is that there are organizations who say, hey, this is my point of view, this is what I don't like in the world, so I want your blacklist or whitelist of uh, who we need to block or not. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not about a trusted web movement, or a WordProof will never say this is good or this is bad, because that's a, a terribly uh, slippery slope. Uh, it will provide an open source infrastructure for transparency, so how did information change, and uh, accountability, who's the center of information. Any more questions? Here is time for... Two more no? questions. I do, uh, th where? Oh, no, there's time for two more questions. Oh, there's time for two more questions. Oh. Well, actually, then I have a question. Because um, yeah. uh, there must be other downsides as well, or is it really the holy grail? Um, great question. <laughs> Thank you, that's what they hire me for. The thing is, in some countries, you're not super... Um, in some countries, you're not, it's not always safe no. to put your identity to the information you spread. So there is a use case for anonymous content as well. Yeah. Um, so it will be a, tide, a time of calibration. And that's, but it's super interesting that Europe is interested in the concept as a, a follow-up on GDPR. That's, yeah. it's, it, it will be an experiment to see uh, how things turn out. And the good thing is, with a small search engine, we can actually, going live with a small search engine, engine is a proof of concept or of uh, how this will work. And from that, you can show to the policymakers, hey, it works at small scale and now we can upscale it. Because, for example, Facebook educates um, the European Commission mm -hmm. on the fact how hard it is to uh, fix fake news, fix misinformation. Because there's a great business model in misinformation and fake news. Yep. But that's we're truly about proving what an open source infrastructure can do to restore trust on the internet. Thank you. One, oh, there was a question there. Yes. Here you go. Wait a second. I will come up to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hello, it's me, Celtic again. Um, I have a quick question. Uh, big platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, or Reddit. And yeah. There is a lot of content on Reddit. There are a lot of uh, people giving their uh, opinions on Reddit. Uh, how does it compare to such big platforms as, uh, such as Reddit? How do you mean compare? Uh, it, it, can it be uh, implemented also on these big platforms? Because that would be great. Uh. For sure. So it's, um, for example, NRC, they integrated with the uh, API. It took them four hours to implement it. Um, all information that matters. And of course, there's... Uh, a WordProof plugin and WordProof integrations, but all standards of how you build a timestamp, they're all available on GitHub. Uh, it will be in the schema repository. So it's not about a company. It's, it's truly open standards for all information that influences buying decisions, health decisions, terms and conditions, e-commerce, uh, drafts from journalists. You can make whole supply chains from, from all information in the world. Um, all information that matters should be timestamped. Um, and implement it. Yep. Yeah, because there are a lot of uh, reviews for uh, e-commerce, for example, that are uh, huh? fake. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what you can do is you have the manufacturer who says product specifications. Then you have um, the wholesale. They can't add product specifications because they come from the manufacturer. Uh, but they can add some marketing information. Then you have the web shop. They can spice it up in a way, but they may not change product specifications because that would be, could be lying. 
then you have buying and only the one who buys can write a review. You can make a whole supply chain of every step in e-commerce and that's super interesting. Yeah, because we have clients who do have uh, 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 concurrents, I don't know. Competitors, competitors, yeah. Competitors, which are using fake uh, reviews. Uh, uh, they have, uh, uh, say, for uh, five stars for, for, from, fi from thousands of people. Yeah. And it's not uh, very realistic. And that's why the integration with uh, schema.org and structured data is so important. Because you can prove to the search engines that your reviews are from real people. And in that way, a real person review, um, independently verifiable, so no uh, need for trust in uh, Trustpilot or whatever, yeah. is so much more valuable. And it's, it's really transparency and accountability. It's really, if you can bring that in an open source uh, way, it will change everything. Is it on the planning yet? The reviews? Yeah. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. So the <laughs> and the, there's the first search engine by the end of I the year. I will connect up with them. Yeah, for sure. So get in touch for all questions. We we really love that. Thank you very much. Perfect. Uh, last question from my side, because when I hear timestamps, does that mean that there is a lot of more storage as well? No. So we work with a hash. Okay. So you have, um, w what was one of the first applications? You made an Excel sheet with all, the, uh, with all your bookkeeping in it. What you can do is, the file has a hash. Mm -hmm. but, and the content of, uh, on the news website has a hash as well. How to come to that hash is all on, uh, defined and open. Only the hash is stored in a blockchain transaction. Okay. So not the file itself. So then you still rely on storing the revisions exactly. uh, in your content management system. Yeah. So you can still erase um, the inputs if you want to. So otherwise it wouldn't be compliant with GDPR. No. Um, you must be able to erase stuff. But it, it will then contribute to uh, storing more and more information. And we all know that storing information is uh, also one of the things that is um, in our environmental uh, challenge. Yeah, I, I agree, but I agree more with radical transparency as a way <laughs> to improve the world. I agree with you as well. So All right, one big hand of applause for Sebastian. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Oh. Mm. Mm. Here's a small present from us. Thank you very much for uh, being here and uh, having this great, interesting talk. Perfect, Thank thanks you so very much. much. Thank okay. you all, and I'll be there by the yeah. drinks. <laughs> All right, we're almost at the end. And um, uh, for this end, I will ask back on stage, uh, uh, Barry again. Barry, come to the stage, please. And here is a microphone at the hand to you. Thank you. And your clicker. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day and see you at beer. <laughs>
we would like to repeat this event or maybe even better for next year and um, we are looking for people who want to help organizing this event so if you think wow i would like to help with setting this up and well giving some of my time which is part of open source as well of course um, please come to one of us or just send an email to drupaljam at drupal.nl and um, well we're looking forward to uh, well working together with you there are a few events upcoming um, well if you would like to go to Spain within two days from now, you can go there. <laughs> so if you think, oh, I would love to have more of this, uh, please go there. And um, uh, at the end of June, there is a mountain camp uh, in Switzerland as well. And a little bit later, um, uh, we have DrupalCon Europe in, uh, in Prague from the, 23rd, the 20th until the 23rd of September. So um, I think ticket sales is open there as well. And I don't know if there are talks to be submitted, but uh, you can find out online. So uh, really great to go there as well. So now we're going for drinks and pizza. Um, our platinum sponsor of today, IO, uh, I just was told that they ordered some extra beer. So beer is sponsored by IO. So thank you very much for that, IO. I think we all enjoy it. <laughs> And while we are having a beer, everyone wants to be a winner in the famous pub quiz, which will be at 6 a.m. in the Utekelder, which is the uh, venue on the opposite side of this room. So thank you very much. There's one person I would like to thank uh, just to finish up, and that's Emil. <laughs> Did you enjoy the day? Yeah, yeah, very much. And um, I'm, uh, I call myself, and some people call me as well, an open source ambassador. And then uh, seeing the word open source passing by here, like in every talk I saw, I think every two sentences it passed by. So it's really an event close to my heart. So I'm really uh, honored to be part of this event. Okay, well, thanks a lot for, well, nothing everything together today. So, uh, <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> okay. Thank you.